Greg Louganis' career as an Olympic diver was one of the most remarkable in the history of athletics. Unfortunately, his life has also been marred by tragedy, substance abuse, and life-threatening disease. This is the story of Greg Louganis. Former professional diver Greg Louganis is a five-time Olympic medalist. He made history at the 1982 World Aquatic Championships when he became the first diver to get only 10s from the judging panel. And he was just 22 years old at the time, too. But his aquatic career properly began a few years before this. Louganis made his first appearance at the 1976 Montreal Olympics. He was only 16 then and completed his Olympic debut by leaving with his first and only silver medal. Louganis would later pick up four gold medals, earning two medals in both the 1984 and 1988 Olympic Games. At the latter event, Louganis famously injured himself by hitting his head on the diving board before landing in the pool. After receiving medical treatment, Louganis returned to reclaim his title. Gregory Louganis was born on January 29, 1960, near San Diego, California. Both of his biological parents were teens, each just 15 years old when he came into the world. The young parents decided to give him up, and he was adopted at nine months old by Peter and Francis Louganis. But life was tough with his adoptive parents. Louganis faced emotional abuse at home, and his father in particular failed to give him adequate support at times when he needed it. This led the young Louganis to experience a number of insecurities, which were only exacerbated when he was diagnosed with dyslexia while attending college. Was he a sad little boy? Mm -hmm. You must have felt terrible. I did. Both Louganis' dyslexia and Samoan descent made him the target of bullies, who also mocked him for his involvement in gymnastics and acrobatics. In an interview with Ability magazine, Louganis once recalled, I remember I was actually given dyslexia as a vocabulary word in my freshman English class, and that was when I realized I wasn't all of the things the other students had been calling me. I was dyslexic. He added that the diagnosis helped him understand the severity of his condition, which then allowed him to determine how to manage his life. Louganis said, Ultimately, you learn coping skills. I wasn't so severely dyslexic that I couldn't get through my day. It was just a hurdle in terms of the fact that it made reading and writing much more laborious for me. Despite the many drawbacks to his home and school life, Louganis's love of sport always provided him with an escape. During his earlier youth, the tumbling technique necessary in gymnastics had proved to be one of his finest talents. As a result, Louganis began exploring those same techniques at his home pool, which caught the eye of his father. He was subsequently signed up to take diving classes. In 1971, Louganis competed in the Junior Olympics, earning his first Olympic Perfect 10 at just 11 years old. By then, people had noticed him as an up-and-coming diver to watch, but he was about to face another obstacle in life. At just 12 years old, Louganis found himself experimenting with drugs. Louganis was using several substances to cope with the negative effects of his early childhood, but it started earlier than that. When Louganis was eight years old, he had picked up his first cigarette and got into the habit of smoking and drinking alcohol. On the day he turned 13, Louganis sat in a juvenile center as punishment from his parents, who had learned that he was using. Heightening his negative coping mechanisms, Louganis was also having suicidal thoughts at the time. His alcohol use continued all through his teen years, and even as Louganis became a star in the world of professional diving, he was hiding his struggles with alcohol and drugs. If you or anyone you know is having suicidal thoughts, please call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-TALK-8255. Louganis could easily have followed up on his first medal win in 1980, but for political reasons, the United States withdrew from that year's Moscow Olympics. He would have to wait another four years to prove that he was the best diver in the world. Fortunately for him, not only was the next Olympic tournament being held in the States, but the games were going to be in California just three hours away from his hometown. At the 1984 Los Angeles Olympics, Louganis took part in the 3-meter and 10-meter diving competitions, 
He won his first two Olympic gold medals that year. Then, in the 1988 Seoul Olympics, Louganis again returned to defend his title, but it was nearly jeopardized by a terrible mistake. During a preliminary round ahead of the main competition, Louganis hit and cut open his head while attempting a dive. He suffered a concussion and needed five stitches for the injuries he sustained, but he amazingly returned to compete just 35 minutes later. Before long, he had added two more gold medals to his collection, becoming the first and only male Olympian in history to sweep the diving events at consecutive games. During the 1980s, the stigma surrounding AIDS and HIV was at its highest, and unbeknownst to everyone, save his coach and a small group, Louganis was HIV positive. He learned of his diagnosis just months before the Seoul Olympics, but knew that sharing it publicly could end his Olympic dreams. His coach sneaked in Louganis's daily medication, and he went on to make history. Years later, he would come out as gay, acknowledging his sexuality at the 1994 Gay Games in New York. The following year, he sat down with Barbara Walters in an interview and revealed that he was living with AIDS. Louganis also admitted to having felt the immense pressure of the reality of his illness. He told Walters, Dealing with the HIV was really difficult for me because I felt like, God, the U.S. Olympic Committee needs to know this. Uh, you know, U.S. diving needs to know it. Louganis retired from diving after the Seoul Olympics and became an LGBTQ activist. He continues to champion the cause to this day.